our next dish is the medieval show dish par excellence, blanc manger, mm -hmm. the white food. It's a very fancy food because it combines foods that were rare, exotic, and expensive. And the white color of all the ingredients symbolizes that because anything white was expensive, basically. Um, we have here chicken, chicken breast, uh, just cooked, not fried, so it stays as white as possible. And um, medieval recipes also propose to take capon instead, which is a castrated, uh, cap uh, castrated rooster, and uh, who, yeah, whose uh, meat was said to be especially light and tender. Then we have here rice flour. This is something very fancy at the time because rice was imported from far away, hence exotic and expensive. We have white lard. We have almond milk. Almond milk is actually used in a lot of medieval recipes, especially during Lent as a substitute for milk, but um, also in many other dishes outside of land in combination with meat. And then we have something very, very fancy for that time. And that is white sugar. That was something that only the rich could afford. Now, um, again, we have from this dish a lot of different recipes because this was common all over Europe. And you can actually see from uh, now again Middle Eastern recipes that there are some predecessors. So the idea of combining chicken and almond milk and sugar might actually have come from the Middle East, but it got immensely popular as a show dish, a fancy dish. Now again here there are also several versions. So today I will focus on one that is um, actually described in two different sources. One is again the same as I was already talking about uh, with the fava bean puree from uh, Würzburg, from Germany, das Wurf von Guter Speis, and also in the form of curry, which is um, from England around 1390. Those two recipes are basically the same. Then there are other variations. For example, in my just published cookbook, Garum, I use a different one that does not use rice flour, but rice. So it's a little more, well, less, less fine, a little more how we would maybe uh, expect a, a, a chicken risotto. But now we do this version. And basically we need to cut and chop finely that chicken breast. I'll find slices and then. And the combination of chicken and sugar might seem strange to us, a sweet chicken dish. In fact, it still exists in Turkey, a dessert based on chicken breast. Not far from this one here at all. It was a geographically very widespread tradition. Now these pieces fine, of chicken are put into a cook pot. Add lard. Again, we don't know how much, but probably they would have put quite a good amount. Let's do it like that. And we need some salt. Sugar. And 
now I add the almond milk and I start boiling the whole thing. Let's bring that to a boil. Once this mixture boils, we carefully add some of the rice flour. To thicken it to a paste, to a thick paste should become completely firm after cooling down. Yes. That's the idea. Put the resulting paste into a form, something that you can turn upside down, a cake form, something like that because it's supposed to be served like a, in the shape of a, of a pudding. And now we just spread it evenly and then we leave it to cool down before serving it. Cold. There is, by the way, or there are, by the way, some um, colored varieties mm -hmm. as well. And uh, one of them is yellow, then you add saffron and a couple of egg yolks. Oh, one of them is green and you add uh, chopped herbs. Now we set aside and leave it to cool. Okay, let's see how this one has, is doing it. Yeah, perfect. Now to serve for a banquet and a white linen cloth was considered absolutely indispensable. And people would eat very neatly and civilized with their fingers, which was not a sign of indulgence or being somewhat primitive. At the contrary, when the first forks came up, they were frowned upon. People would wonder why these fuzzy eaters wouldn't dare to 